Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial, and today we're on board the destroyer USS Kidd. A feature that Kidd has that New Jersey no longer has as such is this firefighting foam pump. This is uh, pretty standard on World War II era ships, and New Jersey almost certainly had several of them. Uh, however, because we display the ship in her 80s and 90s configuration, uh, this was no longer a part. Battleship New Jersey has both AFFF mixing stations, for, particularly for the flight deck and the engineering spaces. Uh, check out the video in the link description below where we talk about some of those uh, AFFF mixing stations, where we could specifically mix up firefighting foam and already had it charged in hoses. And she had canisters similar to these, slightly more modern, ours are plastic, not uh, steel, with the foam in it that you can hook up to a fire hose using an eductor. An eductor is a really cool thing. Um, it's a way to pump water without power. You know, you're in a damage control situation. Maybe you've lost power. Maybe there's no power here to draw from. How do you move fluids around? Uh, an eductor is in the simplest form, like an S-shaped pipe. If you run water into that eductor and it goes through that pipe, it will not only spray out the other side, but it will draw more fluid out of a reservoir along with it. So, with a AFFF mixing pump like this, you can hook a fire hose up to it, you can hook it directly up to your fire main, and you can fill it with the uh, foam, which is in here, it's like a powder, and then it's aqueous film forming foam. When water hits it, it turns into this big foam that can smother fires. So then when the water comes out, one end you've got fire main going into it, the other main end you've got your fire hose going out. When you're spraying that out, you're now spraying a foam instead of a water. Why don't you want to just spray water on a fire? Well. Water is fine if you've got like wood, shoring timbers, uh, life net, something up here that's uh, a combustible solid burning. But if it's a liquid that's burning, like fuel oil, uh, the torpedoes directly above us have uh, liquid fuel propulsion in them. One of those leaks and is burning and you spray it with water. Well, now that fire, the oil floats on the water, so it is now floating to other areas that's catching more stuff on fire along the way. But you spray it and smother with foam and that's going to prevent it from spreading and it's going to put it out. And then it's relatively easy to clean up afterwards. You unhook the fire main from this and you do a wash down and you spray all that foam overboard. Kid has at least a pair of these pumps, one on each side amidships, roughly where the after quintuple mounted torpedo tube is and very near the amidships main deck repair locker where damage control parties would muster. And this is a perfect place for if a Fletcher class destroyer is hit by a kamikaze and then needs to deal with that fire. The damage control party is already there, ready to muster. Oftentimes during kamikaze hits, the fuel spills out of the aircraft and burns on the ship. And now you can go and deal with that. You're also right above most of the access points to the engineering spaces, which also have a lot of fuel in them. Kamikazes were instructed to hit either the bridge, command and control, or the engineering section of the ship. You hit the engineering section, one, that's a large compartment, which if it floods is going to do a considerable amount of damage. Uh, but two, if you take out the engineering plant, you take out the power, and that really limits a ship's ability to then fight the fire and coordinate damage control efforts. Now, American ships were prepared for this with sound-powered phones and things like that, so even without electrical power, they could still communicate. They had battery uh, emergency lights all over the ship that would kick on if they lost electrical power. And then they had eductors, so that even if you lost pumps for the fire main, you could still get some water going to these fires. Kid was lucky, in a sense, when she was hit by a kamikaze, it didn't cause significant fires. The uh, kamikaze damaged the boiler, which caused a bunch of steam to
to come out. Steam is, I guess, moist enough or was enough force that it blew out the fires. And so the ship had some definite issues. Kidd took 38 men killed and 55 wounded out of a crew of just 330. So the ship certainly had her issues, but fortunately, major firefighting was not one of them. Many ships damaged by kamikazes suffered much worse because of the fires that subsequently happened, particularly aircraft carriers like Franklin and Bunker Hill. Also located near the amidships firefighting station is this eight-foot applicator. This can plug onto the end of a fire hose so that it's not me standing there right in front of a fire spraying. I've got this curved nozzle at the end, so if the fire's up there above main deck, but my fire plug is down here, I can spray up there, stick it through this door so I don't have to stand right in the doorway if it's burning and there's a ready service ammunition locker on the other side. I can stand around the corner and spray. Uh, so these are also common features on American ships during World War II. Uh, and they remain on board up into the 80s. Uh, so this is one of those features that Battleship New Jersey would still have for her firefighting equipment. What do you think the most impressive act of damage control during World War II was? I'm always amazed by USS Yorktown getting back in the fight at Midway, but I think I'd have to give it to Franklin or Bunker Hill just being able to save those ships. Tell us your thoughts in the comments section down below. Maybe you think USS Laffey or USS Kidd, significantly smaller ships hit by kamikazes, had the best damage control efforts. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and viewers like yourselves. If you'd like to help support the ongoing restoration efforts on USS Kidd, there's a link in the description below to donate to their museum and their upcoming restoration efforts such as dry docking. Let them know who sent you. You can support Battleship New Jersey by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about our channel. Thanks for watching.